I have been selling comic books as a full-time profession for my sole source of income to support myself and my family now for about three to four years. And we've learned some things over those three to four years. Um, and in this video, we're going to talk about five recommendations of books that I think are good investments. And uh, I was looking at the back end of the website uh, recently, and we are sitting at over 12,500 packages shipped just from the website alone. 12,500 packages over the last three to four years. And that doesn't include uh, eBay and Instagram sales. I used to be really big on Instagram sales in the early days um, or whatnot. And on whatnot, we have over 13,000 items sold. So well over 25,000 items sold, which is absurd. It's just a crazy number, a crazy amount of books. And we've learned some things over those years. And, you know, my business model is a weird one. I don't know where I got this business model idea, um, but I'm sure I got it from somewhere. Or maybe it just jives with my personality type. But my business model is to pay people more for collections than the average dealer and sell them for less. <laughs> it's just the craziest business model, but there are you know, other business models, successful business models that do this and it works and it's worked for me for all of these years. Um, we, I was crunching this year's numbers and I might actually have to do a whole nother video about this year's number. So we'll maybe stay tuned for a, a future video on that one. But in the past, it has worked well for me. So um, with that said, you know, if if you have a collection that you're looking to sell, I'm always buying. I'm currently offering around 60% of fair market value for slabs um, and uh, a lot more than 60% for grails and stuff like that. So if you like a free quote, just shoot me a list of your books and I will get you that quote. I also want to mention before we uh, hop into the list of five books, stay tuned to the end of the video for two tips tips in addition to um, the five good investments is two tips for purchasing uh, books. Um, but before we hop into all that, we have a monthly giveaway here on the YouTube channel. If you subscribe, comment and like you're entered to win a free slab. And if you head over to BriceComics.com where we've sold over 12,500 items so far since business inception, you can find books listed for reasonable prices and use the code COLLECT10 for an additional 10% off an already good price. That code is always active and we we have a newsletter uh, over there where I send out new inventory as it comes through. We're constantly, every single week, getting new inventory here at the shop. Um, and you get first access if you sign up for that newsletter. And it also enters you to win a free slab. We also sell, like I mentioned earlier, on Whatnot, where it's a live shopping platform. A ton of fun if you haven't experienced it yet. There's a link in my description of uh, every video for $15 towards your first purchase. Um, and I have items in the buy it now for $15. So you can stop by and pick up a free book if you're new to Whatnot. And then, of course, follow me over on Instagram for trades for grails and other fresh content over there. So the two categories that we are going to use to determine whether a book is a good investment or not is number one, it has to be highly liquid, right? This means that the book is highly coveted. It doesn't last more than a day when it's listed on my website for fair market value. There's a lot of books that I know as soon as they come through, like if I put this up for FMV, it's gone because it's that highly liquid, highly coveted. And that is one of the requirements to be a book on this list for this video. And number two, it has to be a key issue or a classic cover. And as I'll uh, talk about more, uh, sometimes the best investments for comics are classic covers and not key issues because the uh, values of the books are more steady because they're not associated with characters that are in pop culture and movies and new series of books and things like that. So either a classic cover um, or a key issue and it has to be super, super liquid. Let's hop into the computer and take a look at this list. I have a very exciting new exclusive drop, a new Marvel Comics, Bryze Comics exclusive for Ghost Rider Final Vengeance number one by none other than In Hyuk Lee. We have trade and virgin options available and CGC 9.8 pre-sale options available now at BryzeComics.com. I want to start with a book that I think is undervalued. <gasps> Did he say undervalued in this market, in this economy? 
Let me explain what I mean by undervalued. For what this book is and what it represents and the key significance and how relatively scarce it is, I have always thought that the value of this book was lower than it should be. Like even during the comic boom, I think like it should have been worth more. And now uh, with the current prices, I think it should have been worth more because it's this classic cover by Frank Frazetta. It's the first appearance of Vampirella and she is a character that is going to stay with us till the end of time. There's always new Vampirella covers coming out because of how smoking hot she is. There will always be a demand for this. And if you go and look at the CGC census, um, there's only 1,092 total graded copies on the CGC census. I mean, this thing is relatively scarce for a comic book from 1969. So those things considered, that's why I say I think it's undervalued. I don't know that there will ever be a time when I don't think it's undervalued because you can get right now, for example, and look at this, it, it's right across the board. So, you know, don't don't get it twisted in me saying that it's undervalued, that like, you know, it's going to spike up tomorrow or something like that. No, it it's very possible that the price continues to see a gradual decline um, as evidenced by all of this red. These are the averages for 2023, 12 month and 90 day and across the board, you know, as with many, many books, most books in today's market, you're going to see red like this. But for under that thousand dollar mark, you can get a respectable you know, 5.5 to 7.5, 7.0 if you're lucky. I think the 7.0 sale of 862 was probably an anomaly low, but, you know, set those searches at auction houses and find $1,000 books in your collection that you can live without. I know you can do it. And sell those and consolidate it into Vampirella number one. Shouldn't you have one copy of Vampirella number one by Frank Frazetta? I think you should. Now, this second book, Batman 227, is a book that, dare I say, is recession-proof. <gasps> Did he say recession-proof? Of course not. No comic book is recession-proof. Haven't we proven that with the track record of these sales? But check this out. Let's go over to GPA for Batman 227, which, by the way, is just an iconic cover by Neil Adams, inspired by Detective Comics number 31. Dare I say, the greatest homage cover of all time. Can you tell? I kind of like this book. Um, if we look at GPA, let's look at the 9.6. There hasn't been a sale since August of 2023, but that sale was a record-breaking sale. 9.4, very strong, very strong, consistent numbers here for the 9.4. And the 9.2 record-breaking sale in March of 2024. What comic book is posting record-breaking sales in March of 2024? That's not like some obscure pre-code horror one-of-one one thing that just never comes up. I mean, there's definitely anomalies like that. But this is a book that changes hands all the time. And uh, let's see if that trend holds up here for the lower grade copies, because sometimes those high grade copies, if they are super scarce, would explain why there's record breakers. But here's the 4.5, but here's the 4.5 in March of 2024. Very, very strong sales, flirting with the highs of the pre-market and, and comic book market boom. So very impressive consistent sales for this book, I can say with confidence that it is a good investment. And if we look at the CGC census, there's 2,385 total copies on the CGC census, which is relatively scarce for the era and title of Batman. Next, we have a repeat offender, Incredible Hulk number 340, just a classic cover by Todd McFarlane. Lots of classic covers on the this list because I think classic covers don't go through those fluctuations of key significance like first appearances. A lot of times a first appearance book will have lots of ups and downs because of portrayals of the character in pop culture universe like movies and uh, new series of comic books and stuff. But these classic covers are highly collectible because of the cover. And that doesn't go up or down typically with the portrayal of a character in a movie. So that's why you'll see a lot of classic covers on these good investment lists 
Right now, the 9.8 to the last sale was $910, and it's you know been flirting with $1,000 for uh, quite a while now. Um, even a lot of consistent sales for you know over $1,000, 1,100, 1,200 bucks. I think 910 today on April 9th, 2024, is a screaming deal for this book. Will it go down further than this? Well, look at these red arrows. I mean, there's a lot of red on this page. It's definitely on the decline. Um, so very possible that it does continue to go down a little bit, but how much farther down is it going to go? If we, we have to go all the way back to 2020, right before the comic book boom, before we saw anything under that $900 mark, right? This was right around the comic book boom. And then you have to go back to like 2020 uh, or 2019 rather uh, to see anything consistent in those $400 marks. So I don't see this book going back to 2019 prices. I don't see this book going back to four or 500 bucks. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? Where do you think this book will land as the new like floor before it starts to go up? Leave a note in the comments for Hulk number 340. Um, I wanted to look real quick on the back end of my website here. You might not be able to see where my cursor is circling. I typed in Hulk 340 and I, cause I don't want to show the customer information, but this is the back end of my Shopify website. And these are the, the order page. If I type in Hulk 340, we have about 35 or so copies of this book that I have sold over the last four years. All different grades from the 9.8 to newsstand copies to direct editions to low grade copies. And that's one of the beautiful things about this book is you can get a very well presenting, respectable, you know, 9.2 for around that $200 mark or, you know, go even lower and you can probably find a copy, for, uh, a very well presenting copy for around that $150 mark, maybe in the 8.0 range. Next on the list, we have Iron Man number one, which might surprise some people as a good investment book. This is just one of those books that when it comes to liquidity, when it hits the website for fair market value, it doesn't last more than a day. I think that just so many people just need this book in their collection. It's just such a flagship character, such an iconic, you know, big premiere first issue as stated right there on the cover. Um, it's a good investment because of how highly liquid it is. Um, as far as prices, I mean, you can get an exceptional presenting copy around that 7.5, 8.0 range for around $1,000 and a respectable presenting copy for around the three to $400 range in the lower grades. And if we go to my website back end, I had a hard time finding this book. It says some, if I just type in Iron Man 1, there's like 400 results because it picks up all kinds of different sales. Um, but definitely, you know, a solid number of around that 7.0, 7.5 range. And if we actually go and look at this, uh, I sold a 7.0 for $664 recently. $664. What in the world? Well, that's crazy. I sold a 70 for $624. They uh, used code collect 10 and got $70 off 709. So you can see here, that's crazy. I sold that, that cheap, but uh, here I sold a 7.5. Here I sold an 8.5 signed by Stan Lee, an 8.0, a 7.5. It's very interesting that around that 7.0 to 8.0, and I can, tell, I can tell you from memory that that is a very common grade for this. So maybe that's a good thing to target if that's within your price range. Now, I got to put one on this list. I'm putting a modern book on a good investment list. Call me crazy, but Venom number three, the first full appearance of Noel. I do think that this book is a good investment. I think that we are very, very likely going to see Noel in the MCU. I think that even if he is a one and done, which he probably won't be because of the type of character that he is, he requires backstory and, you know, all of these connections to other parts of the, the universe and stuff. So um, I don't think he's going to be a one and done in that sense. It might be more like a Thanos type storyline or something with Noel. And I think that, you know, for the long term, even when he's out of the MCU, it'll always be a collectible character because of the impact that he made. So 
at today's prices, I mean, we're flirting with that $150 price for this book. I mean, it, it peaked for around, you know, four or $500 during the comic book market boom. And uh, the most recent sale being $174. The low sale this year is $150. And as you can see here on GP analysis, just consistently, I think around, you know, 180 is a fair price in today's market. Um, and will it go down further than that? It's likely, it likely will. I mean, if you look at all this red, I mean, that seems to be where it's trending. Um, but how much lower will the first appearance of Noel go? I mean, is it going to be, I think the next benchmark is like flirting, like I said, flirting with that $150 mark. Is it going to flirt with 125 I don't know. Is it going to be a $100 book? I highly doubt it. Um, the other good thing that this book has going for it is this cover by Ryan Stegman. Just absolutely stunning. So um, I do think it's a good investment, all things considered in today's market. I think Venom number three, the first full appearance of Noel is a good investment, especially when you look at the liquidity. If you go into my website back end and you just type Noel, you get one full page, probably about 40 cells just for Noel. If I type Venom three, you get like, I don't, for some reason, it just pulls in hundreds and hundreds of orders, but uh, type in null, just the word null, and, you know, there's 40 sales. I, I, I bet you I've sold probably 50 or 60 copies of this book, which is crazy. It's crazy to think, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, everyone has one. It's an attainable book. It's not like a super rare book. In fact, let's go see what the census says. Venom 3 from 2018. The first print here has a total of 7,363 graded copies on the CGC census, which I guarantee you is going to go up over time. Um, there's a bunch of different variants, but I would stick with cover A for this one. I mean, this is one of those rare situations uh, or maybe not a rare situation, but a weird situation where the second print, there's 7,363 total first prints on the census, and then there's 580 second prints, and the first print is worth way more than the second print, just like nobody cares about the second print. And the reason is because of the cover. This is the cover people recognize, and it's amazing. So uh, there's a lot of nuance to comic collecting. It doesn't have to be rare to be a good investment. There's other things to consider, like the future potential of the character, the liquidity, the demand. There's lots of stuff to consider, and all of those things considered, I think Venom number 3 is a good investment. Now that we've looked at that list, I want to offer two tips for buying comics in general. And stay tuned for future videos. I need to dive deeper into more tips related things of stuff that I've learned over these years, you know, that will help many collectors. But real quick, two tips here is number one, match up what you love to collect with these investments that are highly liquid and what sells well. Because there is a ton of different types of comics that you can collect and ways you can collect. You can collect runs or just key issues or, you know, certain genres or publishers or whatever. There's any number of ways to collect comics. And so because of that, my recommendation is, and this video is uh, about investing in comics, which is different than collecting comics, but there's also a lot of overlap. And if you can overlap how you collect with investment tips, when it does come time to sell the comics, you'll be sitting in a much more favorable position financially. Now, a lot of people don't care about this. This is a hobby too, as well. And, you know, if this has, if your primary goal in collecting has nothing to do with finances, you know, your children can deal with that after you're long gone. I don't blame you because, you know, we need hobbies that we enjoy. And if that's the case, investment tips go out the window. But my point here is that you can combine the two and have good investment strategies and good collecting strategies because of how vast the comic collecting world is. And it's a great way to narrow down what to collect because, you know, if you're not careful and you don't have a plan or a strategy, the next thing you know, your garage is completely full, you're overwhelmed, and you're not enjoying the hobby anymore. More. So collecting, matching up with investing can be a good way to, you know, narrow down your goals as a collector. Tons of nuance to that. And you need to pave your own path with that. But we do talk about that a lot here on this channel. Um, and number two is target auctions. 
First and foremost, auctions. If you're you know looking for books, uh, target auctions or sellers that you know have great prices. Shameless plug here. I always list list stuff based off of recent sales. That's it. You know, it's gonna if it's going on my website, it's gonna be at or below fair market value, and then I always offer the ten percent off. That's just part of my crazy, stupid business model that keeps stuff moving. And so the idea with that business model is I don't want people to have to go and look up prices when they're on my website. I mean, I encourage you to do so so you, you can see you're getting a good deal. I, the idea was I want people to know that if I listed it, it's a fair price, especially if you use that 10% off. Um, fl prices fluctuate all the time. If you see something on my site that's like way overpriced, the chances are there was a mistake somewhere or the, the market crashed or something. You know, feel free to shoot me a message or an offer. Uh I don't always get, I don't get any messages when you send an offer through the website. So if you send me an offer and you have like a justification and, you know, I just denied your offer, sometimes I'll just get a text on my phone that says like, you know, this person offered you $300 less for your $600 book. And I'm just like, decline, you know, but maybe that's the new price of the book. So shoot me a message uh, via email or Instagram uh, at BriceComics at gmail.com. Be like, hey, this is why. And, and so the reason I say target auctions is because that's kind of like the barometer for the low point of sales, like especially eBay auctions, eBay auctions that end at weird times. Like that's the, when you're going to get the best price for a book is an eBay auction that ends on a Tuesday at two in the afternoon when everyone's at work, right? To like those, those are great auctions to target for a book and you can set a search for the books that you're after um, and be patient. Um, but I want to give an opportunity to leave a shout out, leave a comment in the comment section below of other sellers that have consistently fair prices. You know, I'm, I, I'm not interested in somebody who's going to list a book for 50% more than it's worth and then say, make me an offer. Just just, just list the book for what it's worth. I mean, come on, let's stop jerking each other around like that. Teach their own. Do whatever you want with your pricing strategy. But I would like to hear from you guys, some sellers in the comments below um, that have consistently good prices that you're very happy with, fair deals. So spread the love. There's lots of places to shop for comics. And uh, so check that comment section down below. Thank you guys for sticking with me to the end of the video. Don't forget we have that giveaway here on the youtube channel if you subscribe comment and like you're entered to win that head over to bryscomics.com sign up for the newsletter for another chance to win and get first access to new collections as they come through the shop tons of new stuff hitting the website this week um and uh, follow me over on whatnot link down below for 15 dollars towards your first purchase we always have stuff in the buy it now for 15 bucks thanks as always for sticking with me to the end of the video we'll catch you in the next one bye